I'm Seamus McFerrin, and the episode slated for tonight has actually been moved to Tuesday. This unfortunate bit of news is a result of a few things. The Thanksgiving holiday, my lazy ass, and we at Clutch Productions have decided to release future episodes of Countdown on Tuesdays. But worry not, I, Seamus McFerrin, will not leave you empty-handed. Here is a deleted scene from the Top 5 Slasher Movie Icons episode of Countdown. I know I'm gonna get shanked for this. SHANK! The Halloween season has come, and it's brought with it an overabundance of horror movie goodness. I use goodness loosely when referring to Saw 5. But that's a story for another day. God really needs to smite that franchise. As you're all probably aware, uh, Hollywood has been bereft of originality for some time now. We've had the re-release of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, and coming out soon is, God help me, Friday the 13th. <sighs> this re-emergence of slasher films has forced my hand. I'm going to give you the top five rundown on slasher movie icons. Now before I make with the list here, I'm going to go ahead and delve a little bit deeper into the slasher genre, just for those of you who aren't savvy. Probably were born in the 90s, you know, suck at life. I feel it necessary to give you all a disclaimer. My analysis of this topic is merely my perception. It's not law, it's not absolute. This is simply an opinion. Albeit it's mine, and as we all know, mine's better than yours. It's believed by some that Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho was the original slasher flick. Of course, there are others that maintain that Agatha Christie's mystery novel, and then there were none, is the original slasher piece. You know what I think? That's bullshit. Having said that, the earliest slasher film to popularize it, establish token traits, and more importantly, establish an entire new genre, is John Carpenter's Halloween. So what does it take to earn that title? This subgenre has the following trademarks. Body count, sometimes comprising entirely of teens. There's a lone villain, no minions. The villain is often supernatural, not human, although sometimes he is initially perceived as human. The villain has a facial disfigurement or a mask, or sometimes both. The villain in most cases is male. The villain typically focuses in on an individual or place. Sex kills. Period. That means I'm dead. That means you're dead too, Lindsay. You're a dead bitch. See you in hell. something about you I liked. There's often a lone survivor. The villain is always defeated, but decides to come back anyway. Which I always thought was like complete bullshit. Like, this guy keeps on coming back over and over. You figured people would see a correlation here. Oh, he's not dying. Well, here's a thought. Maybe you dice the motherfucker into ten pieces, stick each piece into a safe, cover that safe with cement, put that fucking cement block into another safe, where you submerge it into a tank with fucking jaws in it. Okay, and yeah, okay, fine. Nine pieces, there aren't nine jaws. Well, clone. Clone the motherfucker. Clone jaws, okay? You cram that tank into maximum security prison. There will never be a sequel. Ever again. And you know what? If they get past fucking jaws... They deserve it. They deserve another movie. In fact, that should be the movie. Them escaping Jaws in... There we go. Jaws versus Freddy. Perfect fucking movie. 